What's going on, everybody? This is Trainer Connor, and it's time for a Wi-Fi battle video. Thank you, guys, for coming to this battle video, everyone. And today, four years ago, October 7th, 2012, Pokemon Black, Pokemon White 2 were released to the Nintendo DS family of systems. Works on the 3DS as well, but it's mainly for the Nintendo DS family of systems. Great games. If you guys have not played these games, games before, I would recommend you go back, you play through these games again. I gotta say, Pokemon Black and White 2, in terms of gameplay experience, 10 out of 10. Great storyline, great characters, great graphics, and the competitive battling environment was spot on. Everyone was uploading content, whether it was, you know, LPs or, you know, Let's Plays, to be precise, whether it's a Nuzlocke or just a play through the games, or Wi-Fi battles. Everybody was doing it. Everybody was doing it. And then, you know, we transition to the next generation, that would be X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. But I gotta tell you something, Black and White 2, it brought me to where I am today, a Pokemon trainer uploading Wi-Fi battles. Pokemon Black and White 2 introduced me to how we battle. The Smogon University website offered Smogon sets of all sorts of Pokemon alike. You got the Battle Finder, which was just an essential tool where you can just go on there, you ask for a Wi-Fi battle, and then you add the person into your game, and then you have a battle, and you see who wins. It was so easy. We don't have that anymore, unfortunately. But that was the best experience ever. If you wanted to be a competitive gamer, if you wanted to be a battler, these games were definitely the ones you have to choose from. But don't get me wrong, though. Pokemon Black and White 1, which was released in 2011, I only, played through, I only played through these games, you know, because I wanted to just go through the game and just be done with it. But no, Pokemon Black and White 2, I was going to be battling all sorts of different trainers, and I would be a world-class Pokemon trainer. So, with that said, since it is October 7th, 2016, four years in the making, I'm going to be posting a nostalgia battle. A battle that I posted on my channel before, but I just wanted to get another shot of how important these games were and just show you guys what it was like back then. I am recording this in high quality, so this is actually my very first time doing this. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, here we go. All right, everybody, here is the Wi-Fi battle you've been waiting for. It's pretty nostalgic, right? Of course, they did upload this before, but that was like two or three years ago. Look at the graphics, guys. It's high quality. You've got the black border. It's all good. So I believe that this is a battle against, again, the Flying Tortuga, who I've battled a lot back in the day. I believe this is a RU battle, so rarely used. Pretty fun here. You got Electabuzz, Regis, Livani, Zangus, Haunter, and Throw on my end there. You got Glalie, Porygon, Camerupt, Unpheasant, Sugawugo, and Trimbeko. So you've got Pokemon that you don't see very much now because the metagame kind of shifts towards, you know, the newer Pokemon that were introduced in X and Y, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. It was quite simple in black and white too. So let's begin here. This is awesome. Uh, I'm going to start with Bolt Buster, the Choice Scarf Electabuzz. Go for the Cross Shop. Doesn't really do much because Electabuzz is a mixed set. So it has Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Psychic, and Cross Shop. So 
here he goes in a shine back go. Who takes that really well because he resists it. I know that from my when I posted this before, I, I know it had seconds, so I believe that's what he's gonna go for. I go to go read Vanny. Leah Valley is the site where you sub down to the swarm range. For those who don't know, swarm uh, increases the amount of damage the bug type moves do. So for X Scissor, it's going to do a lot more. Uh, I, th I believe at this range. So we're able to come out on top here as we can knock out Shimeko. And I have a life orb so that I ensure that I can get into swarm range. He goes with a camera up, it's not gonna go mega because megas were not introduced yet back then. And we get a critical hit. This would have been a two hit KO otherwise, but Leah Vanny, you're doing great. So we KO'd two Pokemon with Leah Vanny, and that was when I was like cussing out Leah Vanny. That was a long time ago, you guys. Unfortunately, when Pheasant is here, and I know that thing outspeeds me. It's most likely scarfed because Lee of Annie is that fast and all that. Here is Sudo Wugo and guys I have never used a Sudo Wugo. It's pretty bad in competitive play but you know Gin the Flying Tortuga is going to show us that it's like yeah it's a bad Pokemon but like I'm using it so you know. <laughs> uh, here's Vanek. Vanek is my Toxic Boost Zangus, whom I enjoy using in lower class tiers. It's got close combat, which doesn't take out Sudo Wugo. And he gets to knock me out with a Stone Edge. So there you go. Again, proved to us that Sudo Wugo is something else. And look at him. He's just he's dancing and he's just having fun out there. We're going to go to Haunter. This particular Haunter, I love using. It's got this uh, disable move that will disable the move that he went for. So Stone Edge, he cannot use it because he used it in the last turn of battle. And we get to go for a Shadow Ball to knock him out. I could have just done that initially, but I don't know what I was doing back then. Who knows? So here's Porygon. I wasn't really sure what he was going to do. But here he shows me Discharge. So I was like, oh, he gets coverage. That's cool. Um, I think he was predicting the Disable again, which is why he is going to go for an Ice Beam on this upcoming turn. I go for another sub thinking that he might switch out or something weird. I don't know what I was doing, guys. This was a long time ago, so don't, you know, go complaining. I'm playing horribly. This was really fun though. So I go into Reg Ice expecting another Ice Beam. Unfortunately, he goes for a Discharge and paralyzes my Reg Ice, which is not... I mean, Reg Ice is really slow. It's like a giant robotic iceberg. So it's really slow in general. So I'm fine with it. And plus I have the Custap Berry, which is like the quick claw, but it's a in berry fashion. I don't know. Um, I get a critical hit on the frost breath. Gets a critical hit every single time, so. And here I get to reveal the flash cannon, and we'll be able to finish off Glalie just like that, so. Pretty awesome. I am in range of, like, a KO from a strong attack. That's something to look out for. He goes back into Unfessing, I wasn't really sure what move he was going to go for. Possibly Brave Bird. So we go into Bolt Buster. But he just goes for the Steel Wing. And I take that really well because I resist it. I figured he might switch expecting a Thunderbolt. But he stays in. And we barely miss on the KO there. So it's like, gosh, if I got the KO there, I would have been in a great position. But now I'm forced to sacrifice someone. We'll sacrifice Haunter. Great job, buddy. You're one of my favorite Pokemon to use in this tier. Not gonna lie. But now I can go back into Bull Buster. This thing is short scarf, so I can pretty much outspeed on Pheasant if I want to. Unless he's scarfed as well. Tough to tell, but 
will not confirm that right now. I go for cross shop because I knew it might KO in Fastlink if I end up being faster. But he just goes into Porygon, so that's good by me, or that's fine by me, excuse me. And uh, you see just how bulky Porygon is with the EV light? Um, you guys know what that item is, so. Can you guys finish me off with a try attack? That's fine. I go into Red Ice once again. And this is where this part of the match, uh, where Red Ice kind of shines through a little bit. We see that this try attack doesn't really do much because Red Ice has good special effects, but it's 200. I go for Thunderbolt for some reason, so like I said, he shines through a little bit. You'll see a little bit later on in this video that Red Ice is going to show us something kind of remarkable. He goes into Unpheasant, and um, since, I'm, since I'm paralyzed, I won't be able to outspeed it, but I have the Cuscat Berry activate on that turn, but I get paralyzed, and then he misses a Steel Wing. Oh my lands that was crazy. I'm still amazed by that play there. That was amazing. So, you know, Regis did his absolute best. I believe that this is my last Pokemon. I'm not really sure. If he had Brave Bird, he could have used it right there, but nope, he did not use it. And so that means the circle throw from throw, haha, <laughs> is going to finish off on Pheasant. And that is going to be the end of that Nostalgia Battle. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was pretty awesome to narrate. I have another Nostalgia Battle for X and Y coming October 12th, and that is going to be amazing. Of course, X and Y was the newest generation. Generation 6. Got some new Pokemon introduced in those games. Pretty fun generation. But, I gotta say, Black and White 2 was definitely the generation that I enjoyed the most. It was a lot simpler. The mega game was strong. Everybody was uploading content in all sorts of different areas. And I started my channel back then as well. So hope you guys uh, like this video and uh, subscribe for more content. I'll see you in the next Wi-Fi battle video. Have a great week. See ya.